Hi, it's Dave T here, and this is another episode in my mini series about powering electrical devices when traveling in a motorhome or caravan without a mains electric hookup. In this episode, I'm gonna take a look at the power consumption of typical electrical devices that might be used in a caravan. Now, if you look online on the various forums and Facebook groups, then you'll often see questions asked about how much solar or battery power is required to camp off grid. Now, the reality is that there are so many variables that there really is no correct answer. So what I'm gonna show you in this video, in as fun a way as possible, is how to work out or measure power consumption, give you all of the measurements that I've made from my van, and also provide a spreadsheet I've created to help you work out your own power consumption. So let's look first at how to work out your power consumption, for which you will need to know how much power each device consumes and for how many hours you will use each device each day. To work out the power of a device, there are three methods. The first option is to look up the specification sheet for the device. This should either give you the watts or the amps that the device consumes. If it only shows the amps, then multiply this by the voltage to find the watts. Sadly, it's hard to actually find this for a lot of devices. The second option, if you are using a solar controller that displays the current draw, then it is possible to switch on just the item you want to measure and then look at the charge in amps that the controller is applying to the battery. Now unfortunately this only works if the battery is full and there is plenty of sun and the device doesn't draw a large current. So this option does work but can be tricky to get accurate results. The third option is to use a special power meter like this one I purchased from Amazon for about £15. Now before you rush out and buy one of these you must note that to measure power you need to be able to measure current as well as voltage and to measure current your meter needs to be in series with the circuit. It is not as simple as measuring the voltage where you can just touch the meter to an existing circuit. In the case of a power meter that measures volts and amps, you need to actually disconnect both the positive and negative leads to the battery and replace them with the meter's leads. Sounds complicated? Don't worry, I've done this for you and I'll give you my findings. So before we start our top 10 power drains, just a quick note to say that for each, I'm gonna display this symbol to display if it was measured with the meter, or this one if I use the product specifications. I'll show the power here in both watts and amp hours at 12 volts. My estimation of how many minutes the device is likely to be used each day will be displayed here. And the approximate percentage of usable capacity of a 105 amp hour leisure battery will be displayed here. Now, of course, the number of minutes used is completely subjective, so your mileage may vary which is where the spreadsheet comes in to calculate your own usage. But hopefully this video will be interesting and informative and give you some ideas nonetheless. So without further ado, let's put some music on and start our countdown. Just caught short of the top 10, every day you'll flush one tenth of one watt down the toilet. At 10, the central heating system draws 2.4 watts before the boiler even kicks in. Next at nine, it takes three watts each day to pump your running water. For hot water at number 8, it's the gas water heater using 4.8 watts. Getting warmer at 7, the wet central heating system using a toasty 12 watts. At 6, 2 hours of radio will use 14.4 watts. Crawling forward at 5, 5 minutes of motor mover jive cost you at least 19 watts. Keeping it chilly just outside the top 3, a gas fridge can still use 34 watts. Lighting it up at number 3, the LED lighting with a whopping 50 watts. And remember, an awning light left on all night could cost you more than 72 watts. Sneaking in at number 2, still the family favourite, the 12 volt TV, pulling around 52 watts. But even running on an inverter, that extra 14 watts still won't take the top spot. So here it is at 1 and it surprised us too. Just turning on the 12 volt system powers up things like the radio in standby and other monitoring systems. These drew just 0.26 amps, but when on 24 hours a day, that adds up to over 70 watts every single day. So, like a Christmas number one from the 70s, that slow build up of power day in, day out, stole the top spot. Now that top 10 rundown was really for um, a bit of amusement and also to give you an idea of where things can fall in terms of what's the high and low usage uh, items in a typical caravan. Now your mileage may differ because obviously all of those measurements were taken from my van and my estimations of how often we for example use a radio or the TV each day. So what I have actually done to make it more use to other people is I've actually created a spreadsheet which will be linked in the description below. Now the first thing you need to do is uh, click on the link 
and, that, and it will most likely open it up on the Office 365 view, so you'll actually view it in the web page. So what you need to do is actually then download it. So you do that by going to File, Save As, and then download a copy. And what that will do is download a copy onto your local machine. You can then open that and you will need a local copy of uh, Microsoft Excel. And when you first open it, it will probably come up and say it's in protected view and you'll need to enable the editing. Looking at the spreadsheet, um, there are several tabs. Hopefully it should have opened by default in the Your Usage tab down here. If not, go to that first tab and you should see the layout we've got here. The things that are coloured, starting with the green ones, these are the things you'll most likely want to check and probably change. So these are things like your battery amp hours, the type of uh, battery, which will affect a lot of the calculations. So lithium is allowed to run down to 10%, uh, whereas a lead acid battery will only actually use 50% of the true capacity of the battery. The amount of solar panels you have on the roof in watts. And also I've given four options, which is a kind of blazing hot summer with maximum efficiency, kind of average to medium UK summer, less efficient, and then spring and autumn and winter. Uh, you can also decide whether you have an onboard tank system or an aqua roll, because if you have an onboard tank system like us, then you'll actually have to pump the water twice. You pump it on board and then you pump it out of the tap, obviously. Um, and your estimated daily usage. To be honest, I wouldn't worry too much about these because the actual aqua roll and water pumping wasn't a, a major uh, consumption factor in terms of the power, um, as you've seen in the earlier part of the video. So those are the green values. Uh, then the next one you're more likely to change is these daily usage values here, which are blue. So for all of the items, you have the option to set the number of hours and minutes that you use each item each day. Uh, and you can enter that uh, just by saying, okay, we're gonna use the motor mover and we use it for, let's say 15 minutes. And you see how that will give you 57 watts based on the power consumption for a typical motor mover. I've calculated that as being 19 amps. If you know that your motor mover is higher and you know the ampage or the wattage, then you can either type the amps in there. So let's say it's um, double or more than double what I've put in there. You can put 40 amps and that will bump up the number of watts and the therefore the daily watts. Okay. You can also, if I delete that, if I um, putting number of watts in there, I can put 500 watts in that way. So basically you can specify the amps or the watts. And you can do that for all of them. So central heating, the tank system and so on, you can just put in how much you think you use those in terms of minutes or hours per day. And also put the readings if you've got your own specific readings for the power consumption of specific devices. In terms of the lighting, I've given you scenarios. So I've broken it down into three times of the day and also the bathroom. So the bathroom, how much time they spend in total in the bathroom. So I've put notionally down about 30 minutes, but you can obviously change that. And then in the morning, you have several lighting configurations. Again, you can change these. I'll cover that in another video or in the comments if um, people want more details about how to change the lighting. It's on the lighting uh, sheet down there. Uh, but for now, you've just got kind of like bathroom only, which effectively zero, because it's all taken out of this line or two spots or two spots in the kitchen and so on. Okay. Similar thing for the evening. So again, in the evening, at the moment, we've got two spots in the kitchen lights and the total is 48 watts. If we say, oh, actually we do the same thing, but we also put the awning on, then it jumps up to 62 watts. And if we think that's gonna be for three hours rather than two, you can see obviously it's gonna have even greater impact there. You also have pull down options for the TV. These are all based on my Thinlux 22 inch uh, TV. Uh, which is a 12 volt TV, but if you run it on an inverter, uh, you've got two options for either DVD or TV uh, mode, uh, because deep when running a DVD, it takes a bit more power. And the same again, running on 12 volts. Okay, so you can choose those there. Uh, also, if you leave it on standby, you've got that option to put that in. If you don't leave it yours on standby, and I recommend you don't, then you can just leave it as it is at the moment on zero for the, the hours per day. Then when it comes to charging electronic devices, I've given three options for mobile phones, tablets, and laptops. And also the typical uh, milliamp hour size batteries that you get in most mobile phones, and there's a choice there. What you can then do is for each of these types of devices, 
you can then go into the charging frequency. So rather than how many minutes and days, if you've got 3000 milliamp hour phone battery and you need to fully recharge it every day, then just choose every day there. Okay. If you find that it's 50% every single day, you may charge it every single day, but it only really needs a full charge every two days, just put every two days. As you change all of these, it will work out the daily watts and also it will represent the daily watts as a percentage of your battery. Okay, so here we can see that the evening lights is 93 watts and that's roughly 14.8, so 15%-ish of the total battery capacity. And then at the bottom, you've got the totals for that. So you can see under this configuration, we've got 394 watts, which is 62% of the battery capacity. So what we can then do is, is showing up here that based on the current entries will fall below the minimum battery level on day five of our trip. Now, just as an experiment, if we go up here and we change this to a 50 watt, notice we're gonna fall below a minimum level recommended on day three. So you can see how this instantly gives you kind of feedback. If we then go to the second tab, this is for the predictions. Up here, it's just giving you the power consumption uh, totals. And then perhaps more interestingly down here, you have got the predictions over time. Then it's gonna have the input watts based on three factors, the solar panel, whether you've said you're trying to estimate it for um, a good summer or bad summer or autumn, winter and so on. And also here you can say for an individual day, whether it's good or bad weather. Now bear in mind, this isn't for monitoring it as you're actually on site. I recommend you just check your uh, power consumption on site. But what it does allow you to do, if you actually have uh, several good days, which fully top up the battery and then several bad days in a row, then you never can quite recover because those good days, once the battery gets to 100% capacity, it's not gonna go any higher. So if the battery's full and you consume 200 watts, regardless of your solar panel, you're only gonna put 200 watts back in. But if the previous day uh, it was bad weather and you were down by 80 watts, then you'll be able to put, those, put 280 watts in, okay, assuming that the solar panel is generating that much. I hope that makes sense. So you can see here how you can change these around and then it kind of changes and also this is the percentage of battery capacity left and if you've told it it's a, a lead acid battery then that will go red and also show a warning here when you're likely to drop below 50%. So this whole spreadsheet the idea of it is that you can really kind of experiment and if you are thinking of either going off grid for the first time you can just play around and kind of um, estimate what you think you would use. Uh, you could work out what's best to stop using it, if you're just trying to conserve energy. And also, if you're looking at uh, purchasing solar equipment, then uh, depending on your usage, whether you mainly caravan in the summer or the winter, and how many nights you go away for, then uh, you can use this to see how much basically you can get away with in terms of going off grid with particular um, devices. So if we change, for example, we go back here and we change this from lead acid to lithium, still with the same solar panels and everything else, then you can see how we're running pretty much up to day 14 before we're um, in any kind of trouble. But that's because lithium batteries can go all the way down to about 10% remaining capacity. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have then please hit that like button and if you would like to see more of the videos I make then please consider subscribing. Oh and by the way if you hit the bell you'll be notified when I post a new video. But most of all thanks for watching.